We saw just now how the mandate triggers starting up a project and if authorised we then perform the activities of the initiation stage. And the initiation stage results in the production of a decision support package called the Project Initiation Document or PID or PID as described in Appendix A, Template A20. PID is a collection of many elements like the A1 Benefits Review Plan and is accompanied by things like the A9 End Stage Report and the A16 Next Stage Plan. The PID and the Next Stage Plan are presented to the Project Board for two decisions in two activities. Authorise the project considers the PID while Authorise a Stage or Exception Plan considers the first delivery stages stage plan. The official manual describes these as two separate activities and explicitly makes the point that they may be as informal as the participants prefer. Implementation in reality is pretty likely to result in both authorise the project and authorise the stage being a single conversation and probably a minuted meeting. Let's pick up now from what happens when we get a positive result from the authorise a stage decision. This authorises the project manager to start the dialogue that delegates work packages to team members or team managers who then receive the work package. The team member then conducts the technical work to create the results to quality specification and also to create progress reports called checkpoint reports and described in Appendix A at template number three. Checkpoint reports report on tasks performed. Checkpoint reports allow the project manager to review work status, which in turn allows the project manager to review stage status, which in turn may require corrective actions, so delegated work packages may be amended. As a result of receiving a checkpoint reports, periodically the project manager will create highlight reports to be sent to the project board. On receipt of highlight reports, the project board may choose to apply direction to the project resulting in corrections even to the extent of stopping the project if they feel that that is appropriate. The team activity will create the results that are to be delivered by this stage and raise notification via configuration management to inform the project managers day-to-day -day routine. That routine includes several potential actions one of which is to delegate further work packages within the current stage plan scope. Review of stage status can result in the allocation of the next set of activities or trigger planning of the next stage or trigger normal project closure. Let's assume for a second that the current delivery stage is not the last. In this case, by following activity described in the managing a stage boundary, project management team will prepare the decision support information the project board will need to approve the project's continuation and the next stage's start. Executing the stage just ending and planning the stage about to start generates information to update the project plan, risk register and business case, possibly also the project management team memberships, assigned duties, reporting lines and report timings. The required controls and management strategies may all be updated, i.e. we may update the PID. All is summarised in an end stage report and the whole lot is passed to the project board to decide whether the project remains viable and desirable. If so, then the cycle of delegate, receive, create, deliver, note completion and review stage status restarts with the project manager taking control of the stage on a day-to-day -day basis handing out work packages and noting when they are complete in order to delegate further work packages and when the supply of work packages within the current stage plan is exhausted starting the plan next delivery stage update project plan report on closing stage and ask the project board for permission to start again and so we go around a tight cycle within the stage and a larger cycle for each stage when eventually review of day-to-day -day status shows that the end of the last stage is approaching, then the activities of the closing a project process are triggered. They confirm that results expected from managing a product delivery have been achieved, delivered and approved by their approval authority. We make sure products are received and accepted by operations and maintenance personnel 
and that project staff are released from project duties. Finally, an end project report is created using the template in Appendix A and the project board's final activity within the scope of PRINCE2 is closing a project.